Okay, I guess I'm live. Maybe. I think. I don't know. <clears throat> live chat. I didn't get the email yet. There's the email. Okay, we'll put on the do not disturb now. You. Uh, view channel. There I am. And have I mentioned SMC High before? Let's go to YouTube. We're going to monetize this mofo. <laughs> YouTube Studio. Wah, wah, wah. I don't know why I'm so slow. Content. Live. On. Okay. Morning, Joe. Hey, Joe, at some point I'm going to message you about getting um, what might be the best way to get some salmon from the Pacific Northwest. Because you know that shit. Uh, not right now, though. We'll talk about that later. Because have I mentioned SMCI before? <laughs> That's the title. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um, I did have somebody ask about Boeing. Let me make sure that's in there. Um. Social request. E L C L M. Uh, SoFi, did I, Peter asked about Boeing, okay, do, 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 215, buy-in from the algo, do, do, do. morning, John, wah, wah, wah. I gotta kinda rush through this today, little bit fast, <laughs> I was uh joking with a uh a friend um that or somebody I think it would may have been somebody from the podcast um my cyber truck just got paid for with SMCI and it's up another 20% today, by the way. It's not. I mean, it's... And CrowdStrike gets another one. I mean, CrowdStrike is at $300. I mean, that one I sold out of at $240. That's at $300. Um, I took some profit. I never got a chance to get back in. I'm not getting in right now. But I just never got a chance to get back in. That's one I'll wait on. I, you know, that's one that... I don't mind waiting on. And SMCI, I would probably not get into that one right now either. Uh, DIVO. Oh, come on. Why can't I type today? And Jeppy. Morning, Chris. Mm. Uh, energy names. Morning, Mike. Hey, Mike, I'm going to give you a shout out. I got an email about, uh, you referred people, so you got a free month. Morning, Q-Tip. Um, I, and I guess, uh, oh, look at all these levered ETFs that are going up. Um, Every time somebody refers three people um, to the newsletter, I guess they pay. I don't know if they just subscribe. I don't know which one it is, but you can get a uh, you can get a uh, a free month. H i b l. Morning, Mo. Mo, I got your uh, your thing in here about which one? SoFi. And I'm glad you found Brad, because Brad, stock market nerd, uh, he is significantly 
more tied to the um, the fundamentals of uh, of SoFi than I am. So he'd he'd be able to give you a much better outlook on that stuff. Um, uh, spy. K B O T um, Spider Sectors Oh Spider Se I mean God X L C X L I B R K I mean, the, I put BRK in the the sectors just because it's it's it. Berkshire has a crossover. I mean, Berkshire has a cross. I mean, here's the thing: Berkshire has not sailed like the rest of the market. Um, you look at a weekly of Berkshire, and it's not crazy. I mean, this is not a crazy stock. We're just back to to the all time highs. So this one, you know, it hasn't been crazy, but. You just got to cross up here. So you're just starting the the next leg up. Uh, let's go to my not owned list. Do, 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 do. Ah, okay. Sleep well, little Mo. Airbnb. Uh, on, on. Fiverr, Trading Desk, Square, which I have up there, okay. Uh, FDX, do, do, do. I don't mind doing that one. Pen, uh, Hua, CCL, Frog is a good one. Zebra, another software company. Lyft, which is an interesting one. Zoom, um, <laughs> Portnoy, Portnoy year to date is going to be up way more than 200%. Morning, Nevin. Here's the thing, Christian. Um, if you, those, those of us who have traded for a while know Portnoy. Portnoy came out and, and was a fixture on CNBC and, and others um, for his crazy investment style. Uh, he knows nothing about stocks. Uh, and he's fully, fully out there saying that he knows nothing about stocks. Um, he is complete entertainment, but I like his style. I mean, I trust him way more than I trust Jim Cramer. Um, at least Portnoy's out there saying, you know, listen, it's not financial advice. Um, you know, invest at your own discretion. Jim Cramer's out there. Uh, I like this one. You should get in on this one. Uh, Lulu, cross up, Siri. Uh, God. Uh, yeah. I think it's, I, I just, I, I mean, I would, while I, I hope that people stay tuned in, I would not. You know, if it were me and I knew about stocks and I knew that Gary's just going to go over uh, SMCI and maybe some other stuff, I'd tune over there every now and then. Uh, AIG. I mean, there is so much. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to go back to the strategy tester. And we're going to go to QQQ. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I'll leave this note in here. Uh, RSI quickly getting below 50. So this might be a quick pullback. Yes, boom. MACD crossing down. Yes, boom. Uh, boom, boom. Yeah. 
any one of those Vanguard uh, ETFs, I mean, again, if you're a, this is why I have the 40-40-20 rule, Christian, is if, if you're not very good at picking stocks and your history has been that um, you don't beat the S&P or don't beat an indices, like, you know, I, I don't be QQQ. I don't try and be QQQ. I just make sure that I'm invested as close to QQQ as possible. Um, but if, if you're not good at it, the 40, 40, 20 rule, throw your crap into v the Vanguard indexes or VO, you know, VOO, VTSAX, throw that 40% that you're never going to touch into that. Um, your next one, you can and try and pick stocks uh, in the next 40%, but that 40, 40, 20, I think is a solid um, direction to, to try and look at. Uh, okay. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to open these up going backwards. Um, uh, okay. I'm going to hit pause on this. Let's make a prediction of what's going to happen next on this chart. The price is moving up quick. Okay. Do, do, do. So when I'm in a trade... Okay, Dan. I've got three of these to look at. Three of these. If I'm in a shorts. winning trade, I want to hold as long as. Um, Warrior Trading had some great shorts over the weekend. Um, when to sell, uh, how you know when to get out of a winning trade, and um, this one, know when to lock in your profits. Just a great, I mean, just a great, great. Um, tutorial that I include in the uh, the newsletter, but these are, I mean, this is, do do do. This is a great article. This is a great article. Uh, this is a great article. Since maybe some people can't look at this one. Um, ba 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 ba. Okay, and then I'm going to open up um, Alpha Picks. We're going to pick this. Okay, Alpha Picks. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to start out with that. We're going to start out with QQQ. Um, we are up at 423. Pre market is up. Do, 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 do. Uh, Pen W is up 2%. I mean, I, I still own that one in my retirement account. Roblox is under 40. Um, earnings week. Oh, I need to go to Savvy Trader uh, and look at the earnings. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I mean, here, here's, look at this. If we go and we look, my trading portfolio was up 12% in 50 day, 30 days. This core portfolio is up 5%. Remember, the core portfolio is just an even weighted. It's just 35 stocks that are, uh, you know, 100 shares of each one that have been bought over time when I've, I've added them in there. And this is since June. Um, so if we look at this, the core portfolio, just against even QQQ. I was looking at this the other day. And we can go um, year to date. Year to date is probably a good one. I mean, look at QQQ is up 2.98. The core portfolio, which is an even weighted portfolio, is up 4.82. It's just, you know, and part of it is because Costco's up so much and Lily's up so much. And they are more heavily weighted um, because of the, the stock price. NVIDIA is up over 600. United Health is down at 504. Um, VOO, which was 400, th that one's, you know, that one's going fine. SMCI, which was 200, which was a, a small portion of the, the portfolio is up crazy amounts. I mean, if we just go gainers, 
Uh, SMCI up 36%, Qualcomm up 4%. Most of this stuff is not crazy up. SMCI is up 36%. Everything else, uh, we don't go, oh, let's go all time. Okay, Uber, 54%. Pan W, 40%. NVIDIA, 36%. SMCI, 36%. Meta, 35%. Costco. And again, this is just buying the core portfolio in June when it was at all-time highs. And, and, and look, you know, Tesla, we're down 21%. Devon, we're down 14%. Pepsi, we're down 10%. Roblox, we're down 6%. XOM, we're down 5%. I haven't taken these out of the core portfolio. Oxy, we're down 1%. Boeing, we're only up 1%. Disney, we're up 3% because we bought in the 80s. Uh, Apple, I don't trade in this portfolio. Just when a name comes in and out, that's the only thing that I do. So, um, that's a, I mean, it's a great one. Uh, earnings week, I do want to do that, and we'll do that after the trading desk one. Okay, so we're going to pull that down there. Um, buh, 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 buh. Okay. Uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to see anything that I click on, uh, it will be in the newsletter. The newsletter is free. Do not be afraid to sign up for the newsletter. It is free. Uh, it comes. The only ones that are paid are this paid portion and education portion. Uh, if you pay for it, you get that. I did launch, and let me see. I don't think there's an about section. Um, I did launch a new thing uh, in here. Which is um, do, 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 do. I guess I can't see it here. I'd have to go into the archives and stuff. Um, let me see. Daily stock pick substack pricing. Uh, let's see. There's the. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Doesn't tell me. Hmm. I guess not. But uh, the newsletter is free. I mean, most of it. You know, you can you can make a ton of money just listening to my new you know, watching my newsletter. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, I'm gonna start recording because I gotta get out of here. I got a lunch date. Good morning. It is Monday, January twenty second. Uh, I hope you've had a good weekend. Um, yeah, I had a good weekend. You know why? SMCI. We'll go into that one. I'll give you a couple of uh, t trading desk uh, app loving. I'm going to get talk about Mara, DraftKings, because we had NFL playoffs this weekend. What you can expect with that one. Uh, some of the 52-week highs. Some of the Apple stuff. They sold out of their Vision Pro. Um, some education stuff from Warrior Pro about when to sell uh, stocks even when you're in runners. And then some social um, stuff. So uh, tune in. I, I hope to have a, a good entertaining uh, bit for you. Here's the cues. Here it is. I, I mean... I published this one when we were at the top of this, and I said, we are in this trading range from the, the middle of December all the way until this. I said, be careful, but the next few days will tell you where the market's going. We've broken above that. Old, sub, old resistance turns into new support. So 411 uh, on the queues is now your support. 411 is now your support. Doesn't mean that you buy into this market. We're at all-time highs. I published this notes. Looked like we're in a trading range until the March Fed with catalysts pushing and pulling. So what will happen is this will continue to push up uh, as we start to see some breakout because you will start to see some breakout. But this RSI, which I said quickly going below 50, uh, could mean that it was a quick pullback. Well, how long was the pullback? It was like one day. You lost confirmation here. If you listen to the algorithm, you're in at 407. That is a solid, solid gain because right now in pre-market, we're at 423. So if you listened to the uh, the, the algorithm, uh, you are now, let's see, 423, you are now up 4%, just in the queues. That does not include TQQQ, which also uh, I bought to lever. If you remember last week, 
or two weeks ago, whenever I bought into the queues, I put it in the newsletter. And again, the newsletter is free. You get all of this for free. The weekend has some paid education, but that's it. But if you re- read my newsletter, you knew I was just doubling down with a short, a small position on TQQQ. I said under 50, this is a solid buy. I did not buy it here on January 10th. I bought it more here when it pulled back. And I think I got in at about 50 bucks. And where I am I on that position now? I'm up, uh, let's see, in pre-market, we're at 55. I'm up 10%. I have to make a decision. Do I want to take my profits? You know, I target 10%. The RSI is up in overbought territory at 72. The MACD is still crossing up. Understand, what I will do with this one is I will probably move my time frame down from a four-hour to a five-minute to a 10-minute, and I'll throw some alerts. I'll identify a price target. Once I identify a price target, I can go to Seeking Alpha and I can say, hey, alert me when it gets to this price, when it trades at this price, and I can pull out. Or I can do some type of alert here in TrendSpider. Remember, all of these tools are meant to allow me to live my life and not sit there and look at a chart. So my TQQQ, now my QQQs, my my Qs, they're staying long. I'm not adding to them currently. I'm going to wait for a pullback. I'm just staying long on those. So that's the overall market that I'm looking at. Now, if you don't want to do this stuff, there is a new tool that I'm going to be rolling out. I will put a link to this in the newsletter because it does include uh, some price off. You will have an additional sale Uh, next week or two weeks from now on this one. So if you're kind of on the fence, just wait. This is the Alpha Picks portfolio. I think it costs about a hundred bucks a year for a one year thing. And what they do is they, they basically pick stocks uh, and you can see the return 82% versus the S and P at 27%. You can find the link in the newsletter. I'll put it in the newsletter. It's down below as well. And you can see uh, how they've performed. Um, Take a look at it. I am usually, and I even wrote this to Seeking Alpha, I am usually not a guy that says, hey, buy these text alert systems, uh, which basically text you entries and exits and things like that. But I watched their video this weekend and I did some research on this. These guys have some fantastic, fantastic um, analysis of Pepsi. And I looked at Modine, which is a big uh, one that they're big on. And they use the Seeking Alpha uh, tools to be able to go over and justify everything that's in here. And they tell you, is it a strong buy? Is it a super strong buy? What we think about it, why we're getting in, uh, why we're getting out, uh, where they think the, the, the strengths are. I mean, this Modine manufacturer, I knew nothing about this. I did a little research into it after I saw it on this Alpha Picks. It's ranked number one in their industry, which is auto parts and equipment stocks. So I will put a link to that. Just know I will have a discount uh, in a week or two. I'm doing a little bit more research into it, but I really, really like that uh, Seeking Alpha Alpha Picks group. You do not need to be a Seeking Alpha Premium member to get access to the, uh, the to the Alpha Picks. So just know that you just need to be a regular, you know, free uh, member of, of Seeking Alpha and you can sign up for Alpha Picks. Now, Super Micro, let's just go and look at the chart real quick. Uh, this is one I am super proud of. I was pounding the table and, and we can go back to October. We can go back to August. Um, I don't know when I initially bought into this. I can take a look if you're interested, but just know I was pounding the table between 200 and 250. When it got down near 250, I said, you have to add this one. The algorithm got you in at 318 here just before. Uh, I have been saying that this would cover this gap and you had at least 13% in this gap. And I said, this gap is going to get filled. Well, not only did we fill it and then we pulled back. Uh, and I said, when you put, when you fill a gap, you typically pull back, but we've broken out way beyond this in pre-market. This is up another 6% or 16% somewhere. Let me see. It is up another 7% at 453. This in pre-market has gotten all the way up to 460. Uh, their earnings are coming out on January 29th. So in seven days next week, uh, this is an article. 
uh, as it, what happened was they raised their guidance Thursday night. You didn't see a reaction until Friday when the market opened. Now, this is ranked number one in their industry. Um, I will also include in the newsletter this article from Seeking Alpha. Um, is The competitive advantage should, be, uh, should fade, but not so soon. Uh, the key point in this article is down at the end, and I will read it for you. Um, if you can't see it or if you want to read it, I have five gift articles. So just email me or send me a message on social media. I can gift you this article if you're interested in it. It goes over everything that SMCI does. It is an absolute fantastic article. The key point for the one, next one or maybe even two years, SMCI remains a good bet uh, to ride a trend and profit from AI. But long term, one has to see the dynamics of the market develop. Things can change quickly these days, especially in the AI or server space. Understand, that is what I'm riding. I am riding the AI space on this. Now, what does this mean for uh, NVIDIA? NVIDIA is over 600 this morning. Uh, it is at, do, 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 let's say, um, let's, oh, my screen froze a little bit. Let's say uh, NVIDIA is at 600. 680 cents uh, in pre-market. It's up 1%. Um, this one, the algorithm has just been a fantastic, fantastic one as well. Uh, it make, I know it makes you money. I'm waiting for it to see. Um, but NVIDIA, uh, their earnings are coming up. I have to stop the recording. I don't know why TrendSpider is like this. I think I have to re-log in. Do, 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 do. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. We're going to close this down and then we're going to open up a new and we're going to go over here, bring it over here, and we're going to go to TrendSpider. Do, do. I was hoping not to edit, but I guess I have to edit. Oh, well, it wasn't picking up that I was touching the server, so uh, maybe I should log out and log back in. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. We're going to log out. We're going to log back in. Well, Larry! <laughs> Four hour. We're going to run it. So NVIDIA, uh, the algorithm makes you 152% versus 133% if you bought and held 24 months ago. So all of these ins and outs, that's the algorithm. That's a four-hour algorithm. I've been saying this one around 500 was fantastic. We hit that 500 and we broke up to 600 within what, two weeks? I mean, you only broke 500 here um, somewhere in the neighborhood of January 3rd. Uh, it was in December, maybe you got up to 500, but you quickly rejected old resistance turns into new support. So 500 is your new support on NVIDIA. Their earnings are coming out. Uh, they just had their earnings. So it's later at some time. Um, I would expect NVIDIA to continue to rise. Now, there's a great article. I'm going to close these two. Uh, there's a great article that I found trading desk or app loving. Which one is better? Uh, app Lovin specialized in mobile app e app ecosystem present um, presents more erratic growth and a history of uncertainty, leading to a lower market valuation despite a more positive outlook. I like this. It came up because I do follow the trading desk. Um, I liked this uh, specific one about app. Um, they are 26 out of 191 in their industry. Uh, what's number one? Uh, Salesforce. DocuSign. I'm still holding DocuSign, by the way, for that uh, that that play on a private equity actually buying it up. Um, I put a little bit of money into this, but if we look at App Lovin, that that article actually interested me because I I know Trading Desk is just overvalued. Um, now the algorithm here on App Lovin loses you three percent, but you lose forty three percent if you bought it twenty four months ago. Is this just a beaten down stock? We can take a look at it here. 
Uh, this is one doesn't have a 200 day on this long term when we go to weekly, but it does have a 50 day. The 50 day is moving positive. You're kind of putting in a shelf here at 39. If we bring this back to the highs here in November 2021, the highs were at 113. You're trading at 40. You're trading at 40 and the highs were at 113. This was just an overvalued stock. Now, the big people are owning this between 13 and 16. There is a volume shelf created being created here at 34. Uh, as far as the RSI goes, you're still in a slightly overbought territory. The MACD is turning down. But if we run this in the four-hour algorithm, we can see kind of how it just jumps around this 200-day. Um, and it, it, you're buying in at 39, and, and it's going to quickly come down. I would say wait for this one. If you're interested in this article, again, you can kind of take a look at it. But uh, I like that article, and it, it got me interested. Um, before we get to the earnings, I want to mention DraftKings. I've been looking at getting into DraftKings and we got this, uh, alert, um, from, uh, DraftKings at 3454. And then we got another cross up here. It kind of came down. Now the RSI is at 70. Uh, here's what you have to know. Now the, the Lions won yesterday. There is currently 10 times more money going into the Lions than any other team. Uh, that is super, super dangerous going into the Super Bowl and the playoffs. Understand how DraftKings makes money is not, oh my God, people lose a, a ton of bets. It's basically on that VIG. So essentially, they would like as many people betting on the Lions as the, the people betting on the, uh, on the 49ers. The 49ers are favored, so maybe they're going to uh, put more points in to make it a little bit easier of a bet. But understand, that headline, that 10 times more money is going into the Lions than any other team is dangerous for all your casinos, which means Penn, which means, uh, you know, uh, and it, ma it means uh, DraftKings. It means any of those sports betting uh, casino-like uh, stocks, you are going to have a danger. Because if for some reason the Lions go on to win the Super Bowl and 10 times more money is going into the Lions and they wind up covering any spread, um, that would be dangerous for casinos. So I, I, that's part of the reason why I'm not getting into DraftKings right now is because I just see that, that downside and it could get pulled back down here to 32. Uh, this isn't a long-term one. Understand their earnings are coming up um, in, let's see, it's uh, February. I don't have a desire to get into this one uh, right now. Uh, I am staying patient, but understand if you if you are in this one, that could be a risk that you want to look at. Uh, Mara. Mara and other miners are uh, a wait and see. How the Bitcoin ETFs to ch shake out? I did get a question from one of the listeners. Are you still in Mara? I am. I am in at 26. Uh, it is currently at 16. Uh, I have not gotten out. It is a brokerage holding, so I could get out, wait for 30 days. I don't expect this to take off anytime soon. Uh, it was clear that the Bitcoin ETFs were a um, buy the, the rumor and sell the news. That's essentially what this was. Now, Mara, if I were smart, I would have gotten out with a 28% gain here in the algorithm. The algorithm makes you 49.2% over 24 months, 30 positions. It has you out right now. It doesn't have you in. Understand that if you bought this two years ago, 40.5% loss. So the algorithm tries to save you. If you're interested in the algorithm, sign up for TrendSpider over at Linktree. It's right here. Uh, I give you my algorithm. Basically, the process is you just sign up, at, use this link, sign up for TrendSpider. Then you email me. Uh, with your confirmation from the email address that you signed up with. I'll send you all the links so that you can Im import everything. Uh, there's two big economic reports coming up this week that could go a long way to determine which way the uh, the central bank does. Remember, this, bank, th this market is trading on the assumption that the Fed is going to reduce rates in March. If that doesn't happen, I would expect us to pull back to those support levels that I said. Uh, the two reports our gross domestic product, which will be released on Thursday, and the personal consumption expenditures prices reading on inflation out Friday. So those are the two big things. What are you trading in between there? Well, it's earnings. 
Over here on Savvy Trader, we've got the earnings calendar. Uh, we've got J&J. &J, we've got GE coming up. We've got Halliburton coming up. Um, we have Netflix tomorrow after the close. Tomorrow after the close, Netflix is coming up. How can you trade that one? We have a strategy, and I put it out 10, 15 days ago, that th there's an algorithm in TrendSpider that you can trade it that makes you crazy percentage. Their earnings are coming up. They're heading into weakness into this earnings. If they come out, you're trading right here on this uh, th this this uh, th this oscillator on the MACD. Your RSI is right at 50. This doesn't give me any idea where this where this stock is going to go. If they come out with great news, uh, I expect it to pull back to the some somewhere in this support range of 550, 540, somewhere in that range. Uh, if they come out with something like well, uh, you know, we haven't seen the growth and the the uh, the ad tier. Yeah, it's going well, but we still haven't seen anything uh, per se um, as far as the the revenue from the the password crackdowns that we expected. Then you can see this pull back probably to 429. Here's my guidance for you. I'm in uh, on the algorithm on this one. Um, if we run the algorithm, we lose 10% versus losing 7.5%. The algorithm says get in at 489. It hasn't gotten you out. It hasn't gotten you out yet. Probably will get you out very soon. So I think it's dangerous. But if you wanted uh, Netflix long term, understand Netflix is a, a an expensive stock. It is not cheap. PE is 46. Uh, forward PE is 30. Understand that this stock, when it was trading uh, way back, if we go to a long term chart and we just go to a monthly chart. Understand that those PE values are significantly lower than when, if you bought in here at uh, January 2013 at $16. Understand that the, the valuation was significantly higher. It was like 80 if you bought in here June 2018 at $316. Uh, if you bought here at the all-time highs at $600, the valuation was significantly higher. So understand that these, these Bollinger Bands are cinching up. It's trading at the top of it. You could be buying at the top for a long term. I don't think it's it's nothing that I worry about. Am I adding to it right now? I'm waiting for it. I've added to it at I think 450 or so. I am pretty heavily into Netflix, by the way. It's the one streaming service I don't cancel. So uh, that's a great earnings this week. We do have Tesla. We have Tesla coming up on uh, Wednesday. And now how do you trade Tesla? I've been saying, hey, Tesla, it, it's kind of you know had its day. Um, I was saying TSLQ, uh, wait for confirmation. We have no confirmation. Now, do I expect something to come of this earnings? The last earnings or Elon was very kind of ho hum. The uh, the Cybertruck is going to be you know the the debt if it if it, it could destroy us. Personally, I put up there in the private Facebook group that. Um, uh, I got my Cybertruck invite to order. I'm not super excited to order. Just my thing. Uh, that's kind of what I'm hearing is a lot of people, the, the diehards are going in there. Uh, here's the reality for me. Uh, and I know this just from knowing Tesla. Uh, you ordered the Cybertruck, okay? And the Cybertruck comes in. You're driving it around here in Atlanta. You hit a pothole. Now, it shouldn't happen because these aren't low-profile tires, but they're special tires. You get a flat tire in a Cybertruck. They don't have the ability to get you a new tire anytime soon. That's kind of where you're at. These are special tires. Um, they're special things. It, it's a that's why you're not seeing cyber trucks other than personal cyber trucks being driven. When they deliver a cyber truck to a store, they actually flatbed it, flatbed it to the store. It's a hard one to, to get by. You got this death cross. And if you want to know what a death cross is, here in the newsletter this weekend, Golden Cross Death Cross. I shared it in the paid newsletter. You can read it. It's part three of the education series. But we have a death cross here, the 50-day moving under the 200. Uh, you are below confirmation. Uh, you don't have the algorithm getting you in. The MACD looks like it's leveling out. Uh, the RSI, it's significantly oversold. You're at 30. It uh, doesn't mean that stock won't continue to go down. I would look at that 200 level as being something that, that we may hit. Uh, and I, I, I specifically see it around this earnings. Now, I say that fully knowing they have completely sold out of their inventory. There is such little inventory in this company. But are they, they're, they're basically taking the product price down. So 
I, I, I'm not trading it. I'm not owning this. I don't own this outright. I own it in XLY. That's the only way that I own it. You got Visa coming out on Thursday with Intel. Uh, with all of this uh, SMCI, with all of the crazy stuff that's gone on, Intel has not risen super, super crazily. Um, the, the algorithm has you in today, but you know, we'll go over the scans at 48, 15. I said at 46, this was probably a good buy to come up here and cover this gap to 50. So if you want to buy in at 48, you probably have a 50%, you know, a 5%, nice 5% gain. If you get some positive on earnings. Now for the long term, you can take a look at this one from a weekly perspective. We just crossed the 200 day. So your support level would be 44. You'd be about 10% down if you hit that 44. Uh, in my mind, I think you just double down. And, and this is a rebound story. So I, I think from a long-term perspective, you're fine on this one. I think Intel will report fine earnings. I think they will hype it up completely. I think you're okay going into this one. Um, we have T-Mobile. Do we have... Um, well, I'll go into more. Uh, today after the bell, you have... Um, what brown and brown you have logitech um you have united airlines you could play some of these uh, zion bank uh, which is an interesting one because dpst uh, dpst is back i think that one's under 90 if i'm not mistaken uh it is up three percent it's at 9125 today in pre-market uh we have the out al the algorithm says get in at 8830 you know you you're going this should have another run when it gets confirmation back that was my note and look at how low that that uh, RSI that MACD is. The RSI is right at fifty. So there you go. Uh, Apple. Let's talk about Apple because on Friday they released their Vision Pro. Uh, Eighty thousand units. Eighty thousand units sold out in the first hour. First hour. Uh, Apple expects to sell an estimated three hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand Vision Pros in twenty twenty four. Let's see. What's 400,000 times 3,000? Yeah, answer is 1.2 billion. Yeah, <laughs> let's see. What's 400,000 times 300,000? The answer is 120 billion. That's how much they'll make. That's how much they'll make. They sold out in an hour of 80,000 units solid. I mean, you know, if you want a reason to get in at 184, there was your reason. Uh, if you want a reason to get in here at, at 191, there's your reason. The average price target on this one, I think it's still 225 or so. Uh, let's say, uh, oh, come on work. My computer is it's, I think it's Safari right now. Uh, let's see. Apple, uh, 31 PE average price target, 198. So 191, you double topped here at 200. Um, until we get to 200, I would think we, we use that as resistance. Eh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's the earnings calendar. So we went through that. Uh, let's close that. Here are your 52-week highs that were made at some point on Friday. At some point on Friday, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Costco, Taiwan Semi, McDonald's, Broadcom. Is it scary to buy into these? Yeah, but... These are 52-week highs. Doesn't mean, you know, they haven't been higher in the past. Just means they're 52-week highs. So um, they are solid, solid names to get into. At 52-week highs, you, you may have to invest for the long term. Uh, I've got some education programs that I wanted to play for you, too, from Warrior. These are all short, so they're like a minute long. I will include three of them. Um, stocks moves up but closes lower in the candle. That's when you can tell when it's moving lower. Uh, there's a doji candle one, um, volume profile with candles, a bull flag. He goes over when to sell stocks when they're running. He is a fantastic, fantastic trader. War, uh, Ross Cameron from uh, uh, Warrior Trading. He's a great, great trader. Understand, he does quick trading. He does volume trading. He doesn't do investing on his channel. Uh, I, I like to take a mix of the two, but... Your, your, your guess is as good as mine, which way the stock market is going. Uh, let's look at some social requests. Um, N. Estrelak, LLC. Could you uh, take a look at EL? What are your thoughts on Devin? Uh, let's look at EL real quick. First one, I think this is Estee Lauder. Just do ELF. I mean, 
if you want to invest in Estee Lauder as a rebound, fine. But China ain't coming back any to, anytime soon. That's where this company has, has gone down. Um, my understanding is that Estee Lauder has gone down because of that. Uh, my pick, it, it, you know, Sherry's pick, Elf. I am not into cosmetics. I don't know cosmetics, uh, but I do know Elf, you make 235% on the, uh, the algorithm over two years, 22 positions. So you're not even trading once per month. Uh, it got you in at 149, you're at 157. Uh, if you bought and held, you're up 448%. Elf is the one that you want. As far as Devin goes, um, here's the thing, and every analyst will tell you this. Energy has not performed. We just have more supply than we have demand. And part of that is because China is so weak. They're not pulling in uh, the demand for oil. Uh, they're not pulling in the demand for natural gas. They're not pulling in any demand for anything. And that's what's killing our markets. Now, if, if you want to blame the Biden administration for the price of gas before, uh, you can thank them for the price of gas now. Uh, crude oil is up 0.6. Natural gas is down another 5%. Remember how I said do not invest in boil? Uh, boil may have a nice rebound at some point in time, but it's not something that I would get in. Um, Devin, they, you keep trying to cost dollar cost average down. I would wait. not until, Don't dollar cost average down until you have confirmation to get in. On this one, if you're just buying on the way down, you're not looking at confirmation. You're, you need to take a look at confirmation. You don't dollar cost average just because it's going down. You dollar cost average when it starts going back up. So for instance, this one, the 50 days moving down, the nine days moving down, the MACDs moving down, the RSI, people are selling into this. When you want to start buying is when this gets over that nine day. The volume levels have been increasing on the sell side. This is dangerous. And I said this before um, last week on an analysis that I made. Um, look at this one pre-pandemic. If we go back before 2020, uh, Devin, before uh, 2020, was a $24 stock. That's where a lot of energy was. Uh, they obviously are a significantly better business today uh, than they were back here. Uh, because you see back in 20, looks like 2018, that's where we're trading back at 2018. A am I giving up on it? No, I still have a large amount of position in this. Uh, I am not getting out. Uh, I, I question whether it gets back to 50, but it's just a little bit, a little bit difficult for me. Uh, understand that when you want to dollar cost average is, is you want to take your short term uh, you like this and you want a dollar cost average when you have a, um, a confirmation. That's the simple way to do it. But, you know, Devin has been a hard one for all of us. Hopefully you have SMCI too. Chris, I'd like to know what your thoughts are in CLM for a long-term uh, hold for the dividend. CLM. Let's see CLM. This is Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund. Uh, oh, it's typical dividend stock. <laughs> you lose your capital. Uh, while the dividend gets paid out. Now, the algorithm makes you 3.3% versus buying and holding over two years, you lost 50%. Let's see what the the the, the lovely uh, uh, dividend is. It's 20% yield. You know what's going to happen? Here's the, here's the thing. At, so here, it's yielding 20%, okay? So you buy here at 750. It yields 20%. It gets down to 719. Your 20%, it still may yield 20%, but they're actually paying you less. So I'm not 100% sure that you want to stay in something that's paying a 20% dividend. Average target price, nobody covers this one. If we go over to Seeking Alpha and we look at CLM, I don't think it's a good long term hold. I mean, just, you know, look at this, this stock value. If we look at CLM over here uh, and we look at, nobody covers it. So I, 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 you know, honest to God, I I would get the hell out. I, there's no reason to stay in this. Um, seeking alpha analyst, it's a two sell. Um, dividend summary, 18% annual forward dividend, dollar thirty. Um, yeah, no, I'd stay here. Here, the reason you want to invest in dividends, Chris, is if you need cash. So you want your money to work for you. But I would tell you rather than a 20% dividend. 
put your money into a bond that actually keeps the the um, the, the asset uh, value at level or buy something that actually you know isn't trading at a 50% discount you know loses 50% over 2 years cuz while you're getting a 20% discount it's actually paying you out less because the actual asset value goes down not a fan of it uh morris asked me to look in sofi um uh, i i sent him over to the stock market nerd uh i know i've been saying sofi is a $10 stock they have their earnings coming up. Is it this week? It might be next week. Yeah, 26th. So they have their earnings coming up on the 26th. Algorithm will probably get you in. Um, we could be using the 200 day of support uh, if it c- continues to go higher. So right now you're at 808. You know, and it's kind of, you're up. Uh, market just opened. So you're at 808. You're kind of breaking this 200 day. I would say if you break the 200 day and hold 808 today, which you are up, I mean, it's up 8%. So you've gained the 200 day. I'd say that you're going to cover this gap uh, up to 950 at some point in time. Their earnings, here's the, here's what you have to know. If they come out with some type of positive earnings, if it's EBITDA positive, which is not hard for them to do, um, I would think that you would get a nice pop to 10. Um, I am not as big a, oh my God, this is the future of finance as the stock market nerd Brad Ferguson is. Um, he and uh, Shay Bular on Twitter both uh, love this stock. I just think you can buy this and wait for a, a retail pop to 10. That's kind of where I've been. If you hold this 808 for today, I would say you can add to it. Um, the forgiveness of student loans probably kills this one. I, again, I'm not a, I, I'm not an expert on this one, but I will tell you that what I've seen on this, I, I think the valuation and the retail pushes it to 10. Um, stock market nerd, I have this in my notes. I don't think a positive gap net income in isolation will be rewarded for SoFi. I think a positive gap net income uh, and a reiteration that it represents a permanent inflection will be rewarded. That along with the revenue targets, uh, tech platform acceleration is the bar to clear my view. I think it will execute like it has executed since going public, which has been good. Personally, so excited for earnings. Results in 2024 guidance will tell us a tongue about how bulls or bears are. I think I'm right. Bears thinks they're right. We shall see who's right. If I am, I'll make a ton of money on this holding. If I'm not, proper diversification will make it a return blip on the radar. And either way, we can take a wonderfully needed break from the constant bickering I see across my feed. That's the stock market nerd. You can see, you know, MACD is crossing up. It's going to get you in. Whether it's enough, the earnings are going to tell you. And and it's it's based on that uh, positive gap. Uh, Peter from my email asked about Boeing. Uh, Boeing is one that the algorithm gets you in at 215. Um Uh, Yeah, 215 right here. No reason to rush in, but at 215 and you're trading at 213, it's down. Uh, There may be more bad news, but you've got that MACD down where it hasn't been in quite a while. You've got it crossing up. Your RSI is at 36. If you want to add to it, add to it. I still say under 200 is the buy, but if you're looking at long term and this gets back to 260, I don't think it's a horrible buy here. Valuation matters. And this, this stock, even though you've had some bad things happen, I think the management has handled it in, correctly for a change. And that's the difference. I think management has, to, has added this for a change. You can clearly see right here, $230 is your resistance level. If you get above that and you hold it for a significant, significant amount of time, not just you know a couple of weeks, but you hold it for a significant amount of time. I think you could pull this one back up to start to cover this gap at 400. That's where I, I, I see it going. If we pull this back and we pull this back to uh, the volume shelf and we pull it back to where it was at its highs, which was looks like March 2019, uh, there's not a lot of people holding above this. Not a ton of people holding above this, but you're holding in this range between 150 and probably 216. There's a good range there. So I don't think you're horrible at buying that one. Uh, I want to give kudos to Mike. Uh, Mike got a free month of the paid newsletter because he referred three three friends. 
So the paid newsletter, again, if you, I, I don't know if you refer three friends who sign up for free or if you sign up, I, I think if you just refer three friends that sign up for free. Uh, but I always put it in the newsletter. Um, I always put uh, a, let's see, recent posts. We'll go down here. Because SMCI was up 35% on Friday. And I said, hey, you should buy here. Here's Friday's uh, thing. SMC has broken 400. I think it would be uh, take a while. But we zipped through the 1030 levels. 350 now becomes support. Well, 400 now can become support. Uh, it's always risky, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, at the end, I always put a share. And you can share. And when you share, if three friends sign up, you get a free month. So kudos, Mike. And thank you, Mike, for being one of my biggest supporters. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know I've made him money. So, And if I make you money, you can always tip me. Mike supports me by buying my stuff. Um, but yeah, Seeking Alpha Premium, uh, Weeble. Weeble has great... I mean, I love... If I haven't told you, I love the Weeble app. Uh, trading on that Weeble app, I absolutely love. I just have no cash right now to trade in the Weeble app because I'm fully invested. Just so everybody knows, I'm fully invested. I'm up 1.4% in Weeble. Uh, let's see. I'll check my Fidelity account real quick before we continue on. Scans, I will tell you. Uh, you'll need to go to the newsletter for all the scans and the bullish, uh, the bullish uh, stocks that are up there because there are a ton, a ton of them. We're, we're in a bull market. There is no doubt in my mind, we are in a bull market. So anything that you want to buy, if you could just check this list, I am up 0.98 in my big account, uh, which I am beating, uh, let's see, NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow Jones. And if you want to see, I mean, I was going over this uh, uh, on the, the the preview of the, um, uh, pre before I started recording the podcast. But here at Savvy Trader, if you go over to Savvy Trader, and you can get Savvy Trader from... Uh, here, you just go down here, follow my trades for free. Uh, the, 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 the Savvy Trader, por I have two portfolios. There are two of them. There is a trading portfolio, which charges $25 per month. You can see what I'm trading. Now, it's $25 a month. I'm not super active on that. I'd rather see you get the newsletter because I uh, broadcast that for free on the newsletter. But I'm up 12.5% in 30 days. The core portfolio is up 5% in 30 days. Now, remember the core portfolio. This is just an even-weighted portfolio of 35 stocks that I recommend that I just buy when they go in. When I take them out, I sell. So if we go to the uh, the, the the history of, um, let's see, news, community, uh, there should be a history tab. I don't know. I can You can always find it in here. But if we go to the year-to-date, and we let's compare it, you know, my performance of 100 equal weighted stock or 35 equal weighted stocks against the NASDAQ up 4.82%. The NASDAQ is up 2.8. Uh, if we look at the all time performance uh, against the Qs, I'm up 14.72. Uh, NASDAQ is up 14.36. So this is how you become a stock picker you track your stuff. Um, let's see. Mike bought that, uh, 250. Let's Luke wants me to look at Baidu. Uh, I believe it's China's largest communication service company trading about 101 price target between 140 and 160. I really appreciate your opinion. Uh, don't invest in China. I mean, my opinion right now, don't invest in China. America is too strong. Chinese market going through a rebound. Chinese market right now is where we were in 2007, 2008. Probably has significantly more downside. They don't know how to fix this right now. The, de the Luke, I would stay away from Baidu. The algorithm doesn't have you in. Now, you should listen to the algorithm because it makes you 4.2% over 24 months. Whereas if you just bought it uh, 24 months ago, you lose 37%. So Baidu, I don't, I, I agree. It's one of China's best companies. It's like a, a, a an Apple or you know one of the great, magnificent seven from China. Uh, I don't think you buy into it. Just I, I'd stay away from it right now because long term, I will tell you. If we look at the weekly, I'd rather see you stay away um, and and see it drop to seventy one, which you could see it drop to seventy one. Uh, you're seeing that the 200 day is just kind of turning, but the 50 days turning negative, 
there's a lot of negative news in this in 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 China, and you're not seeing the MACD breakout. You're seeing more stuff on the the downside in the RSI. Sellers are there. If we pull this back to the all time highs, let's just pull this back uh, this this volume, and, and we see where are people holding. They're holding between 107 and, and 160. That's where people are holding. Uh, that's just since this high. So you will get a pull up, but I'd much rather see you wait until you have confirmation in the four hour algorithm, um, which actually makes you money to, versus trying to just time it and go into it. And honestly, there's better places for your money in this market. America is super, super strong right now. Don't let anybody tell you differently. The, the earnings are good. We're in earnings season. You're going to see good earnings, which is going to pull this stuff up. Just understand, yeah, we're at all-time highs. We've been at all-time highs for a super long time. If you look at the long-term monthly chart, we're at all-time highs all the time. So don't let that scare you out on the market. Now, scans, I will tell you, XLY, we had a cross-up on XLY. We went over Boeing. The cross-up on XLY, 174.87. It's at 180, 174.82. You know why I own this one. I go over this all the time. If we look, go over to here, Seeking Alpha, and we go XLY. Uh, let me get rid of that one. Come on, Seeking Alpha. Um, and we go to the holdings. The reason I hold XLY is because Amazon is the number one holding at 23%. Tesla is the number two. It gets me exposure to Tesla. Gets me exposure to really, really good names. Like Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, McDonald's, all trading at 52-week highs. But I'm diversified by just buying XLY. So that one crossed up. Etsy crossed up. We talked about Etsy last week being a good opportunity at these levels. I, it's still expensive. Understand, it's still expensive. But I, I, at some point in time, this gap up here to 95 gets filled. Um, $70.68. You're trading up 0.59 today. The, the MACD is down here, way down here. Now, it doesn't mean, look, the MACD at this one crossed up at 73, and, and you you held below there for a long time. Uh, the 200-day, right at $70. So at some point in time, you had to break that 200-day. So if you bought here at 73, you had a nice run-up, you know, 25% afterwards. Uh, you could have dollar cost averaged your way down once you had confirmation, you know, up back up to 73. So Etsy, I, I think it's a good one. Uh, there are some major triple levered ETFs like UMDD, uh, which is the Ultra Pro mid cap. Uh, and this one is up. Um, 2111 is where this one tells you to get in. Now, understand you lose 3.1% over 24 months in this one. Uh, you lose 34% if you just bought and held it. And you get 29 positions over 24 months. So it's about once a month, maybe twice a month that you're trading this in the uh, in the algorithm. But it's a triple levered ETF on the mid caps. You have SPXL. We talked about uh, last week we had a TQQQ cross up. SPXL gets a cross up here. Uh, it's a secondary cross up. No, I'm sorry. It, it, it got you out with a 2% loss here, but you're at, at 106.78. You're at 109 today. It's up 1.5%. This is a uh, S&P three times bull levered uh, ETF. Um, you have FAS, which is a financial uh, triple levered uh, ETF bull three times at 83.87. Just got you out with a 50 51% gain. So FAS, you know, 83 is the buy-in, 86 is where it's trading right now. I will include all of these, uh, in, including this one that I might get into myself right now. Uh, it's trading at 91. I've told you that I think this one trades back to 100. Um, this one, the, the DPST, the the stock, the, the, the MACD is way, way down. Uh, the, the, the RSI, right in the mid-level. So... Uh, you take a look at a long-term chart of DPST. Remember, this one got killed, got absolutely killed with the March banking crisis. You came from $867. Now, you did have a reverse, a couple of reverse splits to try and recover this uh, to make it you know, not fall completely. But DPST is a triple levered ETF. If I pull this, there better not be people still holding this one from here now. Uh, your volume shelves kind of pulling up around 100. I would expect this one in a healthy earnings period with bank. We talked about Zion reporting tomorrow. 
in a healthy earnings period for regional banks. This is a triple levered bull ETF on the regional banks for a solid uh, re- uh, readout on earnings from regional banks. This one will fly and it's got room to fly. You can see number one holding Goldman Sachs, um, you know, treasury stuff, citizens, financial, truest financial, Zion's regions, Huntington, Western Alliance, New York. You can see all of this stuff. Uh, it, it, you know, see the holdings. Now, what's the summary? Let's see what uh, Seeking Alpha says. Seeking Alpha says it is three times shares declares a quarterly dividend. That was on um, uh, back there. It says strong sell. They're quant. They say it's a strong sell. Ranked in subclass, let's say 68 out of 82. Triple levered ETFs. They say the number one quant is USD, which is a pro shares three times levered ETF uh, on semiconductors. So maybe you want to, I should put USD in that one. Uh, I need to put this this entire list into uh, TrendSpider so that it can update. But USD, we had this at 55 whole crap. If you had listened to the algorithm, by the way, the algorithm makes you 87% versus 51% buy and hold on this one over two years. Uh, it gets you in and out 28 times. This one right now, 23% run if you listen to the algorithm, but it's completely over so overbought. Uh, the RSI is at 80. The MACD is way up there, but we're seeing you know stuff go up. So tune into the newsletter. Um, there are probably 50 names on here that you can look at. Um, it's a solid, solid list of, you know, again, we're in a bull market. We are absolutely in a bull market. Uh, if you want to subscribe, this is how I update that. I just added USD to the uh, the, the the thing. So if you go into TrendSpider now and you're a TrendSpider subscriber and you scan um, for, uh, for entries, you'll get USD in that list that I provide to you too. Anything that you want, it's here on Linktree. Uh, again, anything that you want, threads, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, you know, podcast, Apple podcast, X, uh, Twitter, t- Voz face, but you got a uh, trend spider. You got seeking alpha. I will add it. The, the seeking alpha alpha picks in here as well, right below the seeking alpha premium. You can join Webull for free. Put $1,000 in there like I did. The newsletter, again, the newsletter is free. It is free during the week. The weekend is a, a paid newsletter. That's it. Uh, Patreon, uh, I did launch and, uh, Patreon is a thousand dollars per month. Um, but it gets you a one-on-one meeting with me. Um, if that's something that you'd like, I suggest not to do that. What I did was here in the, the newsletter, um, I launched, if, if you go and look, I can't show it right now because I'm, I'm logged in as me, but if you go in, uh, to, uh, pay to upgrade, I launched, I believe it's $400, founding members. Uh, So a founding member of the newsletter, it's $400 per year. But what that allows you to do, rather than paying the $1,000 Patreon, I said, you can pay the $400 for one year uh, subscription to the newsletter. And then $150 tip on or or gift from Venmo. And then I'll do a one-on-one Zoom meeting with you. You can ask me anything that you want. I can't give you financial advice, but we can. You can ask me who's going to win the uh, the Detroit versus San Francisco game. I went three for four this weekend. To be honest with you, um, you can ask me who uh, who is going to win the Baltimore Kansas City game. Uh, you can ask me anything that you want. You can ask me uh, about my portfolio. You can ask me about what stocks I'm uh, I'm currently looking at, which I go over for free. You can ask me uh, what stocks you like. But uh, it basically is a $400 for the, the paid newsletter. Uh, and then you get the access to Zoom meeting for 150 bucks. So I thought that was a better, I'll keep Patreon up for a thousand bucks. Cause if somebody wants to pay me a thousand bucks for a one-on-one meeting every month, I'm willing to do it. But I thought this was a, a, a better way because again, I, I, the thousand dollars was put out there because somebody asked me for it. That was simple. That was easy. Uh, hey, you know, my, my time's worth a lot of money because I do communicate with a ton of people. Um, and I like my personal time too. But 
Uh, as far as the uh, the dollar amount, I thought it was crazy. But if someone wants to pay it to me, that's fine. I just thought the 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 weekly newsletter provides you enough education. Uh, and at four hundred dollars, if you think that you need additional uh, questions, I thought that's a more reasonable way of doing it. So you can uh, you can absolutely uh, look at me for um, you know a one hour Zoom meeting. But it is on Venmo, so you just Venmo me, and then we schedule it through there. Um, but the, the only charge that gets, and, and part of the reason is because, you know, Substack does take a percentage. So I'd like it as a gift. We're going to call, uh, the, the one-on-one -on -one meetings as a gift to me, not, not a tip or anything. Uh, but if you have any questions, hit me up. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay. Take care. Bye. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Let me, uh, let me read your comments now. Good morning, Pavin. Ah, oh, Larry. Yeah, and Larry sent me a nice tip. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, do, 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 joined a little late. SMCI. SMCI's, if you didn't hear, there's a good article, Pavin, that I'll include in the newsletter. And if you joined late, um, this is a Seeking Alpha analyst who took a look at SMCI, and it should continue to go. Uh, SMCI is, uh, do, 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 it's pulling back 437. <clears throat> um, algorithm still has you in. I've told you, I'm just adding to it. Uh, the danger is this earnings period. If, if they announce something like their margins have come down, if there's some danger there, um, you're starting to see some, some selling pressure. Let's go to a five minute chart. So we can see the selling pressure. Because when the market opened, yeah. The market opened up. You gapped up. So you'll cover this gap down to about 425. Uh, this gap down here from 314 to 337. I would expect us to pull back to... Um, let's see. Let's see where people are trading this one. Dude, I'm going to pull that back there. And we're going to grab this. And we're going to pull it to... I'm going to pull it where it covered this gap down on the five minute. Uh, most people, I would expect it to pull back to about 400 today. Um, You know, from 430. I'm not trading it, but it's been a solid one. Uh, by 91st AM, I'll shut down the key and took away all from 30 to 130 in an instant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Keystone Pipeline, I understand why it was shut down. Um, it shouldn't have been approved in the first place. I mean, that was that was an Obama shutdown that Trump, the only reason he did it wasn't to bring the cost of oil down. It was to F over Obama and reverse every decision that Obama made. And that was part of Obama getting praise. And so Trump just wanted to piss everybody off. That's the only reason it got approved. The only reason. It wasn't, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why you don't do the Keystone Pipeline. Um, and I'm not in favor of the Keystone Pipeline. Now, Christian, I will say, um, if you shut down the Keystone Pipeline, you still have to get that oil to different places. And where is it? It's in trucks uh, along the way. So it's like, okay, a pipeline is better. I just don't agree with the Keystone Pipeline because of the route. I think if they rerouted it, I'd be a little bit more apt to say yes. But I also think we don't need that much oil. And you don't need oil at, at you know, a dollar a gallon. Um, you know, we produce enough oil in this country that the Keystone Pipeline um, doesn't necessarily need to be built. Uh, we shouldn't be investing uh, resources into oil and gas. We should be re investing resources into renewable portions and keeping the, the price of oil as low as we can. 
So you're going to see another spike in oil at some time. Uh, Pavan, your guess is as good as mine on the ignored sectors. But if you can find something that, that is solid, you know, like like um, SoFi, there you could play their earnings. Intel, I think, you know, Intel could be a one that Intel hasn't participated as much as others. It it ran up before, um, but it hasn't run up in in the you know past week. I mean, it went from forty five to you know forty seven ninety nine. I think Intel could see the that that huge run up. But you know we're pulling back a little bit. Don't don't you know Roblox is up at I had Roblox in here. I don't know why I took it out. Um, I thought I typed it in my notes. Maybe not. Uh, that's up above forty again. Uh, bu- 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 yeah. The the problem with regional banks and 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 the big banks like Bank of America, I'm slightly down on not like down like uh, money wise. I'm still up because I was adding at this twenty six twenty seven under thirty. I was adding a bunch, um, but I'm not so sure this pullback made sense after earnings. But financials are so strong. You're paying two billion dollars in that insurance fund from Bank of America every quarter. But you're going to have a MACD cross-up and the, the market's pulling that up. So financials, in my mind, you know, you look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is up 2% today. Um, you know, 390. I was pounding the table down here at 300 just in uh, October because the, the the book value was 312. So, um Pavan, I wouldn't expect the bull market to last till March. I would expect us to pull back pretty significantly. Um, the data needs to support the March rate cut. So understand right now, the market is pricing in that rate cut. If for some reason you see any data point that comes in and says, ooh, it might be too soon for that rate cut. Like Friday's, um, you know, uh, consumption. You may, you may see a just a crazy pullback um, uh, on that. Uh, we're going. We're a little concerning. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you have to be too worried about it until, and I'm not an expert in this one. I, I, I mean, regional banks, I'm playing DPST and I don't currently own it, uh, but I like it here at 92. And the reason I like it at 92 is just because look at what, when this MACD was down at this, t- at this point, at um, minus two, and it crossed up. Look at what it did there. It doubled, 104%. And you still have that ability in this um, in this decaying asset. Now, it, it typically, it, it will go up to the 200-day, but that 200-day, you're so far away from that 200-day, and that 50-day is still moving negative. To get to that 200-day, you're looking at 213%. So I, I think this has it in it, but you know, 10, 15%, I'd take it. That's the way I'm playing it because I do think that you could get burned on this one. Uh, Autodesk, eh, I think that one's a good one. I don't know too much about it, but I've heard the name. I personally haven't traded this one. Algorithm has you in at 237. Algorithm loses you 27% versus losing 5% on the actual asset. Uh, over 24 months, 32 positions. 
I think this one has had some crazy swings, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it just broke the 200 day. So I think it was just overvalued. But you're definitely seeing, in, in my mind, I think you're seeing this trading range right about here. And you're seeing it top out at about 225. I think you've held enough to think that the 200 day at 225 would provide you support. Seems okay. Uh, we can look at, let's see, Seeking Alpha. And John, you should have Seeking Alpha and Trendspider. Uh, Autodesk, let's see, do they like it? Um, Quant says hold. Most recent one says buy from January 9th. Uh, it's 95 out of 191 in application software. Again, I, I say in that space, <laughs> uh, even though its valuation is crazy, I still think DocuSign is your best bet in this space at about 63. Because if it does get bought out and taken private, uh, I think that's fine. If it doesn't, it's putting off enough cash that I think that's a decent price. So that would be my guess uh, if you want to. To, to, to Shopify, I own a bunch of Shopify and I am significantly profitable on it where I was holding it for quite a big loss. Um, if we look at this one, I don't think you're treating this one like Pepsi or Coke. And the reason you're not treating this like Pepsi or Coke is because of the growth possibilities. Um, they own a bunch of prime. What, what the CEO did was he took the profits in Shopify and started investing in other companies that were actually using Shopify as their service. So he's actually Shopify not only owns their own platform, but they own a bunch of their own retailers as well. And holy shit, look at Palantir up 8%. Um, so Shopify, in my mind, gets back to its 200-day here at 81, and I'm holding it, and I may regret this, but if I see a pullback here, I'm just going to add more. And it's not because, um, you know, oh my God, it's cheap. It's the growth. Coke doesn't have growth. Um, you know, this one, when it turns cash flow positive, I think you're going to see a pop in it, but that forward PE at 78, it's scary. Now the target price is 76 and all of these downgrades from November and December, I don't necessarily agree with them, um, but you can see Insider Monkey, at least 30% annual growth rate. Kathy Wood's latest stock picks, 11 position, uh, biggest positions, um, two brilliant growth stocks that simply cannot be stopped to buy. And that's from today. Um, this Motley Fool analysis, we can go and we can look, can look at Shopify over here in uh, Seeking Alpha. Um, this one in particular, United Health Group. I think United Health Group at 500 is an absolute buy. I think Shopify here at, at 80 is an absolute buy. Um, I, I you know long term. So I, I'm not I'm not trimming Shopify because uh, if you look at this long term. Uh, you're looking at 160 as the all-time highs. You're just back to the 200 day. So that's where I'm kind of treating John the, the Shopify stuff. Now, if you look at this and we pull this to the all-time high, where are people who bought here? Are they out? Yep. There's, in fact, the biggest volume shelf is here between 40. And this is where people just saw an opportunity to buy and they bought. And so these, these volume shelves, you've risen so quickly, you haven't had time to build these volume shelves. So there's no real volume that's pulling it forward up here, but I still like the stock. I like the story. So I'm, I'm, I'm investing for the story, and it's different than Coke. Coke, there's no real story. I mean, Coke is just, you buy Coke um, because it's a $60 stock, and it's putting off a decent dividend, and you're not going to see it you know, completely wipe out. They're, they're managing their cash effectively. So, <laughs> poor folks like myself. Um, 
Yeah, Christian, I mean, oil, cheaper oil benefits um, everybody and cheaper energy benefits everybody. But, at, and this is how, I, and I, you know, remember, I'm a long-term investor. I'm a buy and hold guy. That's where I, I've, I've made my money. I trim a little bit every now and then. I liken this, my theory on energy, to my theory on investing. And if we continue, it's kind of like electric cars. You know, Trump was bashing electric vehicles this weekend, saying that we have to go back to um, producing uh, oil and gas cars. We can produce oil and gas cars here in this country, and that's fine. Um, and we won't export them because nobody wants them. China is going to export electric vehicles at a cheaper price that will be cheaper for people to buy uh, and, and better for the environment. And so they're going to, to win out on the auto race. That means the American car makers will only have this country to sell into. Um, so they will probably go bankrupt or that stock is not one that I would want to invest in. Uh, putting more money into oil and gas or, or and and you can think that you know the government doesn't necessarily put money well when you give tax breaks to uh to you know to, to oil and gas companies that's funding them so you know you can take as an investor the dividends are great but um i just you know again i think renewable energy needs investment i think oil and gas doesn't and I think, you know, opening up uh, our lands to more oil and gas versus funding, I, I, I think Exxon does it right. It's part of why I invested in Exxon. Uh, I think Chevron is doing it similarly, but not as aggressively as Chevron, uh, as Exxon. Um, Exxon is, is basically looking at, and that's why they bought PXD, was because PXD is able to figure out how to get uh, more thin, more oil and gas out of the ground at a cheaper price without doing significant harm to the, more than significant harm to the, the environment. So that's where I, I, I trust Exxon and why I invested in Exxon and not Chevron. Um, but yeah, John, I mean that, that, with a company like Shopify, that's the way you do it. You just dollar across the average. Yeah, Christian and, and Christian and Joe. Here, here's how you invest in companies. Christian and Joe use Shopify. And and what Shopify did when they sold off their uh, fulfillment business was they cut the cost out of the business. So when you cut the cost out of the business, you actually start making money. And so Shopify did that. I expect them to get to all-time highs again. Um, it's the reason I'm not getting rid of my position, uh, but I will add when it gets over that 200-day and it holds that 200-day on the, the weekly. Um, I think that 200-day is significant. You can see we, 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 we re resisted it here when you tried to pull back above it, and then you just shot down. We kind of topped out about 70 here. And you push through that the, these past couple of weeks. Well, if we push past 80 and we hold 80 this week, I think it's off to the races and you're back up to 140, 150s. Yeah. Okay, fellas, I'm going to edit this, this mofo together. You guys have a great day. Uh, and have I mentioned SMCI before? <laughs> I think you're going to pull back to about 410 today. That would be my guess. But I'm trading it on this four hour um, in the five minute session. Let's see. Let's go to the 60. Let's do the 65 minute algorithm. Uh, 65 minute algorithm on SMCI. Tested over eight months. You make 75% versus buying and holding is 159. But it has you in at 406. So, and you're up. It got you in this morning on the second candle. It got you in. Remember, this is just based on an eight day EMA. So, okay. If you are not subscribed, subscribe, hit the like button. 